Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, it's time to look at the last banner for Dragalia Lost. Last as in last new banner with the last... No, that's not true. The last new units coming to the game. Because I think the after these Gala adventures, they said that's it until, you know, the game shuts down in July. So let's go over them. They're Bondforged Zethi and Bondforged Prince. I know... <laughs> I know the idea of going over these units <laughs> feels weird, but I still kind of want to see what they do and talk about them. So let's go. First things first about the actual Dragalia, uh, Gala Dragalia remix, which is funny. Oh, I guess they're not actually Gala units. They're just called Bondforge Zethia and Bondforge Prince. Okay, so they're not... Okay, that really, because based on what I was looking at, feels kind of crazy, but okay. So the newly added five adventures, Bonforge Zethia and Bonforge Prince, will appear in the subsequent uh, summon showcases. Any Gala adventure or dragon added in past Gala Dragalia summon showcases may appear in the summon showcase. For info included, whatever. Please note that the only the following adventures and no dragons are featured in this summon showcase. And the Scratchathon, you can't get them. And that's Bonforge Zethia and Bonforge Prince. Worm signals may only be redeemed in the summon showcase. Yeah, we all know that. Okay. Let's look. Bondforge Zethia, Light. Zethia, having awakened to the power of bonds, using the power of the Auspex and Bahamut, she fights for her friends to save the world. She now has the ability to fight and the strength of heart to stand tall on her own. Blazing Fonts, Shareable 5, deals damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts Flash Burn. If the user has power of bonds, the skill will instead deal damage. To the target and nearby enemies, dispel one buff from each of them and inflict flash burn. The user will be immune to knockback during this attack. Damage is 800 over 3 hits, 2800, 7980 when it's a shared skill. And when the user has power of bonds, it deals 1800 damage over 1 hit, 360 over 5 hits, same amount of skill energy, and same thing of flash burn, except for now it dispels buffs. The Ring of Affection grants all teammates the power of bonds effect. If an adventure has powers of bond, when that adventure would take damage greater than or equal to the remaining HP, that damage is nullified. The effect is consumed and damage is instead dealt to the rest of the user's team. This damage equals 20% of each teammate's maximum HP. If the user has power of bonds, this skill will instead restore HP to all teammates and remove power of bonds from the entire team. Skill energy required is 4,200, does not stack, doesn't go away either. When the user has power of bonds, skill energy required is zero, <laughs> so you can just use it to heal when you get too low. Okay, skill damage 15%, chain co-op ability, light HP 80% equals shadow resistance 6%, bond forge off specs 2. When the user's HP drops to 30%, restore the user's HP, if the, if the user has power of bonds, also restore the HP to the rest of the team after activating these effects will not activate again for 45 seconds. Also using Ring of Affection will grant the entire team critical damage amp with a maximum team amp level of 3. <laughs> wow! She <laughs> because, yeah, it's the, the game is ending, everyone just get crit amp. We only have like 5 of them in the game, f f uh, fuck it. After the amp is granted, the ability will not grant it again for 30 seconds. Unbreakable Bonds 2, Poison and Cure, uh, Curses Susceptibility uh, reduced by 100%. Bondforge Might 2 increases attack skill damage by 20%, also increases attack skill damage by a further 40% when the user has power of bonds. Uh, yeah. This unit seems, uh, dumb. <laughs> the one thing I will say is that if you were on auto, I would bet that her auto, um, ability would be straight trash? Yeah, I feel like it would be trash. The reason I say that is that... Anytime you have a... Because it seems like what you want to do is kind of keep power of bonds until you're close to dying. And then <laughs> when you're close to dying, use it and then get it back when you're healing everyone. I mean, I think that's what you're trying to do here. The problem is the AI has no good way of actually detecting any of that. <laughs> so you have to all do that all manually. But if you're doing it manually, it sounds like you would almost... I feel like you would almost never die, right? Yeah, unless you're just, uh, I don't know what boss is dealing this much crazy damage in such a short amount of time that, yeah, I don't know, they would have to deal, because it's equal to each maximum HP, so 
you would have you could take in theory five hits, twenty percent, forty percent, sixty percent, eighty percent, one hundred percent. Yeah. So after the fifth hit, but only it only happens when. Yeah, it would only happen when they would take damage, when they would die, in essence, and then they would be able to survive. Everyone would be able to survive. That's how I'm reading it, though. If I'm reading something wrong, feel free to tell me. But this ability seems insanely good, and also too complicated for the AI to make good work of it, uh, based off of the AI workings of many of the other healers in the game. So, that's what I feel about that great healer and finally we have bond forge prince who is a win <laughs> which means after now that the game you really know the game is shutting down when they finally release a version of the prince that is win and can be run with midgar somer <laughs> because that was always the thing that bothered me the most the, the prince was fire at the beginning uh and his first dragon ever was midgar soma and uh, he never, yeah, the only other elements that he's available in, I think, are in uh, besides fire, are light and shadow, because of, I, some are Yudin's shadow, right? That sounds about right. Something like that. There was not a lot of different versions of him. And I think the reason is, is that maybe they were secretly always hoping to eventually release a version with him, with, uh, Midgar Soma as, like, a big unit, and it looks like it's finally happened. And it's, of course, that's when the game is ending, but, uh, man. Okay, let's talk about it. Blazing Tempest skills. Uh, the user takes the form of uh, Primal Midgar Soma and deals damage to the target and nearby enemies. This attack partially fills the Dragon Gauge if it connects. The user then returns to their original form, deals further damage to enemies in a line, and inflicts Stormlash. Certain abilities to activate while shapeshift uh, will affect Primal Midgar Soma's attack. Only the skill is used. Uh, excuse me. While Shapeshift, a variant called United Tempest will be used instead. United Tempest deals damage to surrounding enemies and lowers their risen with wind resistance, then deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts stun. It is possible to charge the skill gauge by attacking and using it up to twice during one Shapeshift. Damage is 230 over 5 hits, 1085 over 1 hit. Skill energy required is 3050. Storm Lash, Dragon Energy Gained is 50, when Shapeshift, damage is 60 over 15 hits, 300 over 4 hits, and 195 over 3 hits. And special effects, wind resistance 15%, stun lasts 7 seconds. Vortex Circlet, the user takes the form of Primal Midgar Somer, deals damage to surrounding enemies, inflicts stun, and returns to their original form. The user then deals damage to surrounding enemies. This attack, the second attack, uh, significantly reduces the mode gauge. Certain abilities that activate while shapeshifting will affect Primal Midgar Soma's attack. 271 over hit to hits, 2025 over one hit, lasts six seconds. Shapeshifting boost, five, six, seven, eight. Adds 10% to the modifier applied to damage when in dragon form. and ex extends shapeshift time by 20%. Chain co-op ability, dragon haste 20%. The wind worms, dragon light 2, grants the user a unique force strike that deals damage to enemies in a line. Performing this force strike during the standard attack, then immediately following it with another standard attack, will resume the user's standard attack combo with their most recent attack. If this unique force strike is performed while in midair during the fourth attack and the user's standard attack combo, a power of variant that deals more damage will be used instead. When shapeshifting, the user will transform into Primal Midgar Somer. Regardless of what dragon they are equipped with, Primal Midgar Somer's dragon skills level will match the level of the adventure's initial skill displayed on top of their skill list. Shapeshifting will grant an entire team grid <laughs> damage amp with a maximum team amp level of 3. When in dragon form, the user's attacks are granted the ability to dispel one enemy buff. This effect does not apply to damage dealt as his user shapeshifts. Unbreakable Bonds 2 reduces the ability to freeze and bug by 100%. Temperature Charge 2 fill 50% of the Dragon Gauge when the user's HP drops to 40% once per quest. And reduces Dragon uh, Gauge depletion over time by 20%. Uh, stats show include increase or decrease. Some skills have different effects when used as a shared skill. The Adventures Bond Forge Prince's skills cannot be shared. Adventures with the same name cannot be used in the same Yeah. Regarding Bondforge's Princess Standard Attacks and Skills, abilities that increase damage 
dealt while shapeshift, such as dragon damage percentage, and abilities that grant effects to attack perform while shapeshift, such as windworms dragonlight, apply to a fifth attack and bondforge prints a standard attack combo, and the attack performed by primal migrants on one of the skills blazing tempest and a vortex circle are used. Okay, so it really looks like they just looked at Alberius, who was the shadow version, basically the exact same unit. And they said, what if we just made that the Prince and Wind, and we made him probably crazy strong? <laughs> I think his cooldowns are also way... No, actually, the second one is 7,200. If I remember right, the other ones are... Let me check real quick. Okay, I'm back. It's about the same. 3,360 uh, versus 5,045 versus this. Uh, 3,050, and this one is... No, this one is... 7,200, so okay. But very similar in design of what they're doing. I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that he is going to be dealing an insane amount of damage because he sounds insanely good to me. Man. Because uh, if you don't know, this Alberia is very good. They just made a wind version of him, basically. <laughs> and a new one who actually has amps and stuff because I want to say Alberius maybe launched without amps. I actually don't know because I've never was able to pull Alberius. Hopefully before the game ends I can, so I can play with him, but yeah, these are the, the final two units, and I think they seem pretty damn good to be the final two. Fitting that they're the final two, and hopefully easier to get, I mean, we'll see, huh, when the Galadrigalia remix uh, goes live. We'll see how easy they end up being. Um, yeah, that's it. This is the, I don't want to end the video, but this is the end of the video. This is probably the last time you'll ever hear me talk about brand new units ever again in Dragalia. Unless they release some new ones, which would be pretty funny. Uh, I don't know if they're going to mana. They should mana spiral. If there's more people getting mana spiral, they'll talk about them. But in terms of new units, this is kind of it. Yeah, this is it, man. So, thanks a lot for listening to me always give opinions on what I think about units, even though I am, in fact, not the best in this game. I always really appreciated it. Till next time, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day. Peace out.